Executive Insight. Mount Kinka, atop which sits Gifu Castle, and the clear waters of the Nagata River. Located in central Japan, Gifu Prefecture is surrounded to the north by 3,000 meter high mountains, the source of beautiful rivers that have given birth to a land rich in nature. Taking advantage of its abundant natural resources and central location, the prefecture has successfully developed its own industries. Many historical buildings and national treasures have been preserved, merging the old with the new. In recent years, Gifu has been pursuing a strategy to reinvigorate the regional economy. We speak to Governor Hajime Furuta about his vision. First, I'd like to ask you, what kind of place is Gifu Prefecture and what are its characteristics? The simplest description is that it's in the middle of Japan. From long ago, Gifu was the junction between cultures of the eastern and western regions of the country, the junction of Edo culture and Kansai culture. It's a place where cultures mixed. Gifu Prefecture also covers a wide area of which 80% is forest, from the 3,000-meter Japanese Alps all the way down to the river areas at sea level of zero meters. There is an extremely wide altitude difference. There are also numerous mountains and forests rich in resources, and the water collected there turns into clear streams that flow down to the Sea of Japan and the Pacific Ocean. What you could call the character or culture of the prefecture is connected by those clear streams. Water nourishes the lives of the people and creates a bond between them. That's how I would describe Gifu. I understand that water has been the link and engine for various industries since long ago. Does that still hold true today with modern industries? Forestry and agriculture have grown because of water. Washi paper, knives, pottery and woodwork have also benefited greatly from water. And in terms of cutting-edge industries, components and materials for autos, as well as for aerospace, are a major business for us. Manufacturing is thriving in those fields. Blessed with rich natural resources, such as mountains, rivers and clean water, as well as its geographic location, Gifu Prefecture has developed into a major center of manufacturing in Japan. Woodworking, which carries on the traditions and techniques of the master artisans of Hida. And Honminoshi. Last year, the technique of making this traditional paper was added to UNESCO's intangible cultural heritage list. Gifu lanterns made with washi paper are a traditional craft with a history of more than 300 years. Seiki knives, a shining example of traditional craftsmanship, are a world-renowned brand. We want to integrate tradition and innovations made possible with new machines like these to produce high-quality knives for people around the world. The Tono region is the country's biggest producer of ceramics for Japanese and Western-style dishware and tiles. Seven industries have developed in the prefecture and are being promoted in the international market. In around 2007 and 2008, we put together a 10-year vision for the prefecture. At the time, it was titled, Taking on the Challenges of a Shrinking Population and Society. From back then, we expected the population in the prefecture to shrink. But we also set out to increase non-resident populations. That means to widely promote the attractions of Gifu to people inside and outside. To increase exchanges of people and things. As a result, interest in Gifu from overseas has rapidly grown. If you talk to the proprietors of inns in Hidatakayama, they can answer in English and French, of course, but also Chinese, Korean and other languages. There are also tourists from the Philippines, so Tagalog and Indonesian as well. Recently, when I asked how it was going, an innkeeper told me that they started studying Hebrew. That's how diverse the tourists who come to Gifu are. To get more people to know about the attractions of Gifu, 
They started a full-scale promotional campaign in 2009 aimed at overseas markets. As a result, the number of non-Japanese hotel guests exceeded 600,000 in 2014. The figure has reached new highs for three years running. In particular, in many Southeast Asian countries, Hida Takayama and the World Heritage Site of Shirakawago have gained a reputation as must-see places when visiting central Japan. In carrying out our campaign, one aim is to show Gifu in its entirety. We call it three-in-one. Tourism, food and crafts. All of them together are the Gifu brand that we want to promote. We don't want to focus on one particular thing to market. We want to market them as a package. We call it Feel Gifu. We want people to experience what Gifu is. By the public and private sectors working together, good opportunities might be created that can be developed as businesses by the private sector. We're doing this as a public-private partnership with a clear target in mind. For a long time, Gifu wasn't widely recognized overseas as a tourist destination. To become chosen by tourists, the prefecture needed to narrow down its strategy and carry out effective campaigns. One such initiative involves the governor himself traveling to countries as part of a top-level marketing pitch for the Gifu brand. Why are you carrying out these top-level marketing activities? Tourism isn't exclusive to tour agents. Every citizen should have pride in their prefecture and should boast about it. We felt we should find things to boast about together. That's why we started the Hida Mino Pride project. First, we find things around us, polish them up and promote them. The government will support that entire process of discovery, development and dissemination. In every country I go to, together with the Japanese ambassador stationed there, I carry the flags of Japan and of Gifu Prefecture in extending an invitation. I want to leave the impression that this is a national as well as a regional campaign. Local businesses are getting inquiries and we've been able to successfully promote the prefecture. And recently a lot of people have started accompanying me on these top-level marketing trips. This is a pottery workshop. With about 20 employees, it is a small company. Local industries are primarily comprised of small companies. While making high-quality products, they have struggled to grow due to a lack of know-how and funds needed for marketing. This company that makes Mino ware says top-level marketing by the governor had a big effect. The governor was planning trips overseas, and officials gave us information about lifestyle shops and other aspects of that region, that country. So we decided to promote our products at an exhibition. And later, we got inquiries from people wanting to visit our facility. What the governor is doing has been extremely helpful in terms of product development and promotion. We're unable to go overseas to promote or sell our products. So for prefectural officials and the governor himself to go out is something we're extremely grateful about. With their help, we hope to be able to do more on our own and link this to sales. The prefecture is also leveraging its own resources for regional revitalization. I've heard that you're also attracting interest from overseas in the field of sports. Gifu is a region that's extremely passionate about sports. In particular, about 1,200 to 2,200 meters above the foot of Mount Ontake, we have one of the best high-altitude training areas in Japan. Ahead of the upcoming Tokyo Olympic and Paralympic Games, we're promoting it as a training camp for participating countries. We've already had big interest from England, the US, France and Australia. During the recent World Track and Field Championships in Beijing, the mid-distance running team from England traveled to Beijing from here. We are committed to always providing the best hospitality and a great environment. Those are the resources we hope to utilize. 
a building adjacent to JR Gifu Station. A new initiative is about to start here as well. This is inside a train station, but the shops are quite fancy. The station serves 20 million passengers every year. Even if just a few percent of them peek into the stores, it's a huge number. We want people who come to Gifu to see the best of Gifu. The people of Gifu themselves are not necessarily aware of the great things we have here. So we built these shops as places for the sellers and buyers of Gifu to meet and for the people of Gifu to see the great local products. So everyone becomes a salesperson for Gifu. That's right. This store, called the Gifts Shop, brings together the seven major industries of the prefecture. It doesn't just sell things, but also proposes lifestyle concepts. With 2,500 items from 200 local firms on offer, it is a specialty shop that represents Gifu at its best. Last year, the hand-making technique for Honmino Washi paper was designated a UNESCO World Heritage. These are bags made from that. For example, this can be folded and used as a pouch, and also as a shoulder bag. You can fold it and carry it too. And this is the top-selling product here. This is Shunke lacquerware of Hida. It's originally a lunchbox. A lunchbox, how gorgeous. And this, overseas, it's used as a jewelry box. A jewelry box instead of lunch. It's a gift that's really appreciated. Another product is Seki knives. They're coated in titanium. There are many different colors. They're extremely lightweight and functional and cut well. They're very highly regarded. This is coated on the inside and won't leak water. You put ice in here and use it as a wine cooler. It's made of wood, so you get that woody fragrance. I take this along often on my trips overseas. These wood wine coolers really surprise people. They're appreciated 100%. We line up all kinds of products in places like this, and once every two months we carefully check what's selling, what kinds of requests customers have made, and what spending per customer is. Then we discuss what products to put on the floor. We're constantly changing the products on display. Right now, we're trying out all kinds of arrangements as much as we can at this shop to see how much we can expand this concept. It's partly an experiment. I imagine the first impulse is to expand abroad or even to Tokyo. Unless we build a firm base in the local area first, I think it'll be difficult to move forward. You had 600,000 overseas guests last year, and you're forecasting a million this year, so how will you achieve that? We make new fans of Gifu. We get opinion leaders overseas and other interested people to become fans of Gifu, and they in turn can become salespeople for us in their countries. That's the kind of trend we'd like to create. So that effort is paying off in terms of the growing number? We're still halfway, actually. We've only started. I believe we need to continue moving forward. Marketing the Gifu brand through a public-private partnership. What ideas will spring forth next?